Hey guys, uh, tonight we're going to look at the Brave Castle BCR1 uh, chest rig slash cummerbund slash, uh, I don't know, really cool stuff in a, in a neat package. Uh, it's OEM'd by First Spear, so the quality is kind of above reproach. Uh, but we'll get it down on the table, show you what it's all about. There's a lot of uh, capability packed in here, and uh, it should be dropping May 1st. Uh, so depending on when you see this video, it might be available or uh, just a couple days away. So check it out. All right, folks, so tonight we're looking at the Brave Castle BCR1 uh, chest rig slash uh, cummerbund, if you will. And uh, depending on when you watch this, may or may not be released, but it is going to market uh, for $180, uh, which first glance seems kind of steep. But uh, just, you know, give it a chance as we go through this. It is uh, built by First Spear. So uh, if you're not familiar with First Spear products, uh, they are a premium product. Um, so that's where a lot of that price comes from. Uh, plus it is kind of a unique design. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of capability in here that's not necessarily readily apparent. Uh, so I think that the, the $180 really isn't as big of a stretch as it might appear at first glance. Uh, so Brave Castle did send me this rig. Um, so I just want to put that out there to eliminate any biases or, or highlight any potential biases. Uh, however, it is uh, just being loaned to me. So I'm sending it back to him. This is actually one of his prototypes uh, and kind of his rig. So uh, it will be going back to him. So hopefully that any chance of a bias is, is gone, right? It's just a loaner product. Um, so looking at it, it absolutely has some uh, design elements or inspiration that came from the T-Rex Arms Ready Rig, uh, which is totally fine, right? It's not a blatant copy. Uh, a lot of the functionality, you could say, is copied, uh, but it's definitely improved, and and it's kind of crazy. This was already in the works when I put out my, my Ready Rig video, uh, so I, I'm not taking credit for any of the improvements, but he hit almost all of the boxes for the things that I had issue with on the, the ready rig. Um, so, you, you know, that's great, right? There's, there's improvement happening in the industry and you really can't get mad at that. So uh, kind of surface level, it has uh, almost the same functionality. So it's got room for three uh, M4 mags up front. He also sent me a quad uh, pistol pouch which will fit inside of it. So if you wanted a uh, pistol caliber carbine or subgun mags, uh, or you know just, just extra pistol mags for the range, uh, you can absolutely do that with it. It fits fine. His inserts, he's gonna continue to build in-house to kind of help cut down some of the cost. So you'll get a first sphere rig with Brave Castle inserts, which is kind of cool. You know, he's still making something uh, to put with his product. His inserts, are plenty plenty tight uh there's there's good retention uh at least on the m4 mags the pistol mags depending on what um what specific weapon you're using the retention could be could be extra stiff or looser it really just depends on what you're using um you can see it has the uh the velcro just down the center of the the magazine portion the m4 mags are the same way and then on the back it's just on the center uh, he does stretch the coverage out about as far as he can. Uh, and they are all open bottomed with a uh, webbing loop there. So the durability is there for sure. If, uh, if you shy away from open bottom inserts, you know, just be aware that that's the case. And that is also the case, you know, on the bottom of the rig, uh, just the way it's assembled, you will have some exposed magazine on the bottom. All right. Um, so, you know, just pointing that out, some people that, that really bothers them, the, the concern for getting debris in there and whatnot. And it's a valid concern. Uh, the, like I said, the, the inserts though are plenty tight and I've hit on other inserts in the past for this kind of limited Velcro coverage. However, he fixed the, the way that it's secured in there. So it really doesn't cause any issues. Uh, unlike the, the ready rig video where that was kind of a, a limiting factor on the rig and how it closed. All right. So when you look at the front of the rig, there is a full Velcro sandwich that comes from both sides to secure your, your insert in place. 
And uh, so that's why that, that kind of doesn't matter is you have the, the Velcro continuity on, on one side of the flap is a little bit limited, but then you close the Velcro over on itself. So you have full four inch Velcro on four inch Velcro and you will not have any issues with that coming undone. Plus the seam is just the two layers of Velcro. So there's no uh, lip or anything to catch on to potentially rip that open. And also, you know, with this flap, you have the capability to kind of stretch the limits of what you can fit inside there. So you could absolutely put a 3308 insert in there and you would still get uh, some, some Velcro continuity from the flaps themselves, plus onto the insert. You could, you could get all sorts of goofy. You could put, you know, like a, a two long gun insert in there or something uh, with like some 338 or something like that or 300 wind mag. And you shouldn't have any issues with that. Uh, you could even step up. Gosh, you could probably do, you know, if, if you had the reason, you could probably do two uh, Barrett mags next to each other. You might be really limited on how much Velcro you got to attach to itself. But I, I think you could pull it off. Uh, and that's just, you know, not necessarily something that you would want to do, but you have that, that capability. You could also play with it some more and you could have, you know, radios and, and a couple M4 mags. Uh, if you were working with Bofangs, you could probably put a Bofang and still three M4 mags in there. So the, the way that it closes from both sides, there's a lot of capability there and, and room to kind of expand beyond the, the marketed, uh, volume. And then, uh, so once you've got your insert in there. Uh, and it also opens it up. You can put danglers uh, underneath or in front of your mags or, or whatever. You can, you know, wrap stuff around the front of this thing uh, and and lots of lots of capability there. And I'll actually show you, this is uh, the med pouch. This is going to be sold separate. I don't know the cost on this thing, uh, but it uses this uh, four inch one wrap. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit later where it's intended to mount. But you could even have uh, potentially two of those side by side on the front of this thing if you wanted some like GP space. And then you're almost mimicking the capacity of something like a micro fight, maybe even a little bit bigger on the front of this chest rig, uh, which I hadn't necessarily thought of that before. Uh, so that's kind of neat. All right. On both sides of the, uh, the center portion, you have uh, tubes. So uh, what that enables you to do is one, uh, give you, you know, an easy way to down and doff this thing. Uh, if you undo both sides, you can throw it straight over your head, uh, which is very nice. Uh, one of the complaints I had with the ready rig is it's, it's really hard to put on depending on how high you, you run the chest rig. Um, and even if it was, you know, lots of slack, it was still kind of a challenge to get on. These straps have a little bit more body to them, a little bit more structure, and they don't move around a whole lot. And I could even cross them through on this uh, back webbing here so that the X kind of stays in place. Uh, but the added capability of having tubes on both sides is uh, if you disconnect these side release buckles here, you now have a tubes terminated placard. Uh, you can see there is a, a, you know, a piece of loop on the back of here just to cancel out that Velcro. But if you took that off, it is a hook-backed placard that you could run on most uh, most uh, plate carriers these days. And then the way everything's assembled in the back, you can take the harness completely off. And this creates a fully functional cummerbund. So you could, depending on what plate carrier you're buying, uh, like defense mechanisms would be a great example. They don't come with a cummerbund, but they are set up to use this exact type of cummerbund. So if you had... The BCR1 for $180 plus the uh, defense mechanisms PC for, I think it was $140 or $150, depending on Molly back. You now have a, a relatively full featured plate carrier for right around uh, $320 or so, $330. Um, with, with the placard included. So when you look at it like that, if this is kind of the ideal stepping stone. You know, a lot of people will start out like, oh, you need a really good uh, belt setup or a solid belt setup. And then maybe you want to dabble in chest rigs and then eventually you get down into armor and plate carriers. This makes an ideal stepping stone. You buy it as kind of a premium chest rig uh, at $180. But then when you get to the point where you're buying a plate carrier, if it's one of the a la carte options out there, 
that will take a Velcro sandwich cummerbund in the back, bam, you've got this and you don't have to buy a cummerbund. Plus it's already got the tubes on it, which a lot of people are huge fans of, and, and you're ready to rock. You don't need to buy a, a tubes modification kit or anything like that. So I think when you look at it from that angle, the price makes a lot more sense versus just a, a, uh, a chest rig. All right, so we'll uh, just to keep this thing kind of together. We'll, we'll put these tubes back together here. And we'll get these uh, front mags out of the way here. Uh, so we can see the harness a little bit better. So you've got side release buckles here. I didn't check if these are field repairable buckles, but it, it doesn't really matter. If they're not, you can cut the buckle off, leave the tab in place, and uh, you can put some field repairable buckles on there to do whatever you need to. Uh, if you wanted to switch to G-hooks, you can you can dremel out a piece of the G-hook so it'll feed on here, and then it would work on a Faro uh, plate carrier just fine. Uh, the harness is pretty nice. It's uh, dual layer webbing, uh, which is two inch webbing uh, with some uh, kind of molly webbing running a good ways up uh, to there is all usable webbing. So you've got four four chunks of it, if you will, uh, for comms routing and whatnot. But again, if you don't need the harness because you're using it on, on a plate carrier, you can ditch the whole thing. Uh, what is a little bit interesting is the two halves of the, the cummerbund portion, if you will, are not uh, mirrored. So on the left side, as worn, you have kind of this uh, accidental pocket here, if you will. I don't know how intentionally built into the design that was, but that'll hold a Sharpie or a needle D or something like that. You might be able to wedge some, some shears in there, uh, just fine. And then you've got two, uh, M4 sized pockets and then another kind of accidental pocket on the back here, uh, which could again, hold a, uh, of a relatively narrow item. You could stick a couple of chem lights in there if you wanted to. I don't think you could get enough slack in there to put a tourniquet or anything, but it is a channel so you could um, run some shot cord in there and then have your tourniquet external. That would work fine uh, if shot cord tourniquets are your, your thing. Uh, each one of these uh, M4 pouches are lined with loop Velcro uh, front and back as well as the outer face. Uh, the interface is elastic. So I don't know 100% what the intent was there or how, how that was kind of supposed to be expanded upon, uh, but you could put uh, some secondary retention in there if you wanted to, uh, with some shot cord and some Velcro mounted tabs, um, or you could mount you know other Velcro mounted things to the outside. It does uh, provide some really nice retention over just the raw elastic. It adds a little bit of grip to the, uh, the interface there. And your mags are actually surprisingly secure. Uh, so we've got two, two M4 size pockets on the left side is worn, plus these kind of two accidental pockets. And then when we look at the right side is worn, you have kind of that same uh, Sharpie or pen or needle D pocket and then one M4 mag sized cell. And then this kind of, it's, it feels reinforced. I don't know what's in there exactly. It's, I don't think it's just elastic and uh, Velcro, but it's this big loop lined pocket here. And it's, I think it was probably three and a half, if not four inches wide, maybe four inches wide. Uh, but that is kind of the intended mounting location for the uh, add-on IFAC pocket. So this, this big chunk of one wrap will fully engage. You can go all the way around this, this pocket with the one wrap, or you can, you can finagle it into uh, the pocket here, at least the top portion, all right? So you can, you can get that into that kind of cup, and then the bottom portion will come up around your, your cummerbund here. So if you can imagine, you've got this pouch mounted to the outside of the cummerbund, and then you could still make use of that sleeve. Uh, what exactly you would put in there, I don't necessarily know. Uh, and another M4 mag will fit in there uh, fairly well. The retention's not too bad. Not quite as ideal because there's really no stretch left to this, this pocket area, uh, but it does have the, the Velcro there, so it does have some grip to it. Um, outside of that, I don't know 
I don't know what else you could you could best make use of that space with. Um, and I, I went back and I looked at some of uh, Brave Castle's uh, media that he's put out, and I didn't necessarily see it being used for anything other than the IFAC pocket. But the the possibility exists. You could you could probably shove a Bofang in there. I don't know if I would want to because it is it does feel a little bit reinforced, so it's going to pinch your radio a little bit. And Bofangs are not the most durable things out there. Uh, but that's that's where that first aid pocket is kind of marketed to go. Uh, when you look at the the pocket itself, I'm not. You know, Brave Castle told me to tear this thing apart, uh, at least in critiques when I'm looking at it. And the, the pocket doesn't do a whole lot for me. Uh, but luckily, it is an add-on feature, so you don't have to get it, and it's not built into the $180. Uh, but it's it's a fairly generic GP pocket. Uh, you could definitely do, like, a sandwich bag IFAC in there and, and have enough room for an IFAC that makes sense. But there's not... There's not really anything, you know, particularly special about this pocket itself. Um, you know, if, if my if my strongest critique against this thing is that it's generic, I, I think he's doing all right. Uh, but there is room in there to have a real uh, legitimate IFAC. All right, looking at the, the back of the rig. So this is where your uh, harness adjustment comes into play. It's all uh, one inch webbing up until you get to the actual shoulder strap portion. So there is almost infinite adjustability here. If you were if you were tiny or you were running at super high, you could bottom out your shoulder strap all the way down on the tri glide here. Or if you need all of the shoulder strap, like you can you can run this out until you're just at the tail end of your one inch webbing. Uh, so it would fit every every possible size human being. And I think that would also make up for uh, wider human beings as well as tall human beings. Uh, but additionally, you know, being the one inch webbing, if you needed to take all the slack out of this, you can absolutely police up that webbing real easily, tape it up or just uh, cut it off and be totally fine. Uh, looking at other, other issues, right, that he uh, fixed that he didn't, he didn't necessarily know he was fixing my issues, right? Uh, his rear closure is much wider than the ready rig at almost a foot wide. And it does have some bulk to it, just like the, the ready rig did, if not a little bit more actually, because he has a full uh, Velcro wrap here. So you've got, you know, you've got the, the rear portion of the, the connection, if you will. And then it wraps around both both sides of the cummerbund with another layer, and then you bring it back and close it on it. Uh, it is the the super sweet first spear Velcro in some spots where the the Velcro kind of is the base material, so you cut down on on the inherent bulk there a little bit. Uh, but it does have several layers going into it. But the nice thing is you have so much adjustability on here when you open this up you can pay out the cummerbund all the way out uh, in both directions or if you really need to eat up a lot of the the chest rig you can bring these these back pockets into this if need be and, and crisscross your your cummerbund a good bit so i don't think you'd have any issues with adjustment there also you have plenty of adjustment for when you throw this thing on a plate carrier that you could have internal radios on the plate carrier. Uh, you're probably not going to have side plates unless they're hanging off of like the front plate bag. Uh, but you could you could definitely go from a chest rig that fit to a plate carrier cummerbund that fit over whatever you're worried about without losing any capability or having a lot of uh, hook Velcro hanging off of the back of your plate carrier. The the hook portion on the, the inner side of the cummerbund is sized very well to give you a lot of flexibility without having too much hook that you have to worry about chewing up combat tops and whatnot. So, you know, that is the, uh, the Brave Castle uh, BCR-1. I think it's, it's really well done. Uh, you know, another small, small issue that, that I'm not totally sold on is kind of the the opposing sides of the cummerbund not being mirrored, um, but really that's driven from me being a left-handed rifle shooter. Um, so I would rather have my 
my double M4 side on my right side versus my left. Um, but that's, you know, that's really splitting hairs. The overwhelming majority of the population shoots rifle right-handed uh, or, or correctly, as would be the case. Um, so it shouldn't matter too much. Um, the, you know, you could, you could find a way to, to make them, uh, same on both sides while still being able to accept the, uh, IFAC, I think, unless he had something intentional that he was trying to get that kind of reinforced portion for that I'm not recognizing. Uh, but that's really a small critique because I, I don't also, you know, I don't typically go two or three mags back on a cummerbund anyways. It's really just that first pocket that matters. Uh, you can you can absolutely fit a bowfang in those pockets. You'll stretch out the elastic a little bit more, but not much more than a uh, an M4 mag will. Um, so you can do radios in the cummerbund if that's something that you want. You know, we already talked about radios up front if if that's something that you want. Um, but yeah, it's it's a cool rig. Uh, you also have the the hook sandwich here on the back side, so you know even if you were using it just as a chest rig. Like you could still have internal radios on the chest rig if that was also something that you wanted. Um, I think I think you know, all told, one hundred and eighty dollars. The value is there. I don't necessarily know like if you're only ever going to use it as a chest rig. If the one hundred and eighty dollars is is the best one hundred and eighty dollars that you can spend, but if there is ever any chance that you incorporate it in a plate carrier, I think it immediately makes a lot of sense and it's a pretty good value. Uh, plus, I'm a big fan of the way he did the front. Uh, there's a lot of chest rigs that kind of meet general capacity and whatnot, but you have a, a ton of flexibility up front with the way that he put this together or the way that First Spear put it together. And, and again, you know, being First Spear, it's going to last. It's going to work. First Spear has got great quality, and I'm, I'm confident that this thing is is built to last. Really, the only long-term concern that you're going to have is is elastic holding up. But this is this is quality uh, elastic that that is strong, and it's going to last you as long, in my opinion, as any other part of this thing before it's just completely shot and, and you don't have that that kind of spring tension to it anymore. So, really appreciate your time, guys. Uh, if you see this before May first, you know, set a reminder, go check it out, mull it over. Buy one or not, I don't know. I'm not I'm not a salesman for Brave Castle, but I, I do appreciate uh newer folks and smaller shops putting out good products and and I like when they get the support to to continue pushing out new products. So I know this is a, a 23 minute video now on a chest rig that's fairly straightforward, but I wanted you guys to to take the time and really appreciate it. And uh thanks again to Brave Castle for trusting me to take a look at his product and uh, give it some honest feedback. So thanks guys.